Welcome to European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on decarbonizing maritime transport. Transporting more than 80% of the world's goods, maritime shipping is the backbone of the global economy. But there's a downside. It pollutes. So how are the EU and international organizations trying to curb air polluting emissions from ships and other greener fuel alternatives? Stay with us. With Christmas season approaching, have you ever wondered how your online orders will get delivered to you? Chances are they'll be put on a container ship in China or wherever they're produced and shipped across the world to your front door. Maritime shipping is essential to the world economy and our well-being, but like trucks, planes and all other forms of transportation that burn hydrocarbon fuels for energy, vessels release significant volumes of emissions that pollute the air and contribute to global warming. International maritime transport is actually responsible for around 2 to 3% of global greenhouse gas emissions. This is more than the emissions of any EU member state, and these have increased nearly 10% between 2012 and 2018. And what is more worrying, as shipping is projected to grow further, unless we do something about it, emissions will also rise by up to 50% by 2050. So it's time for action. But who takes decisions when it comes to maritime transport? The International Maritime Organization, the IMO, regulates international shipping through conventions agreed and applied by its 174 member states. The EU enforces these rules in EU waters and applies its own rules, which are often stricter, to European ships and all ships in European waters and ports. So, aware of the problem, the IMO started legislating on this issue 10 years ago and in 2018 it agreed an initial strategy for reducing greenhouse gas emissions from ships with the aim of cutting them by at least 50% by 2050 compared to 2008 levels before phasing them out entirely. While concrete steps are yet to be agreed, achieving this goal will require both short and long-term measures to make the switch to alternative fuels and energy sources. Although markets are powerful, they cannot on their own make the transition happen. So regulation is needed to set goals and push innovation. And guidance from the International Maritime Organization is expected before the end of this year. So what has the EU done? Stay with us. To begin with, the EU transposed the IMO sulphur limits into EU law and set the same limits for all ships calling at EU ports. It also adopted a system to monitor, report and verify CO2 emissions from large ships using EU ports as a first step towards cutting these emissions in European waters. Furthermore, the European Commission announced in the European Green Deal that greenhouse gas emissions from EU transport should be cut by 90% by 2050 and outlined how this would involve shipping. And in September 2020, members of the European Parliament voted in favour of including CO2 emissions from the maritime sector in the EU's carbon market from 2022, throwing its weight behind EU plans to make ships pay for their pollution. A move that has been praised by environmental NGOs and criticised by shipping companies. You bet. The EU has also promoted the introduction of liquefied natural gas infrastructure in its ports and supported research and development to advance alternative fuels and innovative energy and transport solutions. So what can ships do to pollute less and comply with the tighter pollution limits being set? Truth is that shipping companies are already combining several strategies to reduce both their fuel consumption and their emissions. For instance, engine modifications to make them more effective, further exhaust cleaning methods or reducing cruising speed to consume less fuel. Most ships today use heavy fuel oil or marine gas oil burned in a diesel engine. So, to comply with the low sulphur limits, they have basically two options. To keep on using the high sulphur fuel oil and install an exhaust gas cleaning system or scrubber, or to switch to a low sulphur fuel. None of these options is ideal, but there is yet a third option. To use alternative fuels such as liquefied natural gas or petroleum gas, methanol, biofuels and hydrogen. So why are ships switching to these? Well, if less than 1% of the world fleet runs on alternative fuels today, it's because there are big challenges associated with their widespread use. First of all, they are not yet as widely available as oil-based fuels, and building the necessary supply infrastructure will take time. Secondly, 
To get the same energy level as with oil-based fuels, you need a much bigger volume of alternative fuel, so that means bigger tanks on board. And as many alternative fuels have a low flash point, you also need to think about how to safely store and use them on the ship. And the truth is, there is no consensus yet on which alternative fuel would be better placed to replace oil-based fuels, as they all come with pluses and minuses. Take liquefied natural gas, for instance. To environmental organisations, it's clear that it won't solve the emissions problem, while to industry, it is the cleanest fossil fuel available. And while it may not contribute so much to the shipping's decarbonisation, it can help improve air quality in ports and lower shipping's impact on the environment and human health. When considering the uptake of various fuels, we also need to differentiate between short sea shipping and deep ocean going ships, as both have very different requirements, so what works for one may not necessarily work for the other. For instance, ships covering relatively short routes may be able to use methanol and biofuels which are readily available in some ports, or even go fully electrical. But large vessels crossing the world need a fuel that is globally available and doesn't take up much of the cargo space. But despite the challenges, there are several international initiatives supporting shipping decarbonisation across the maritime industry, many of them stemming from the EU, as we've outlined earlier in this podcast. So let's keep steering the ship in the right direction and make maritime transport more environmentally friendly. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts.